morning. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Welcome, welcome everyone that's tuning in. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. This morning, just before I got on the stream, I was with the Lord, and I I remember just feeling so tired, (laughs) 
but my love for him swallowed up my my tiredness in my body and I was just sitting there just worshiping him giving him giving him his worship his praise and as I was sitting there what kept coming to my heart what kept coming to my mind is although I was feeling tired and although I wasn't really sensing much the thought that kept coming to me over and over again for those moments with him was worship him and exist to give him glory because he deserves your worship. Give him glory because he is worthy to be glorified. And as I was adjusting my heart, because every time we worship, every time we get in his presence, the Spirit of God will often reveal the condition of our hearts. We don't always feel like praying. We don't always feel like worshiping. But as the Spirit was showing me, He was revealing something to me. And it was almost as if He was, he was saying to me, Lord, it was almost like he was saying to me, Chris, give me glory because I deserve it. Worship me because I am good and I deserve it. Give me glory because I'm God. Don't worry about what you feel. Don't worry about what you sense. Don't worry about trying to get something from my presence. Don't worry about receiving. I want to receive your praise. And as I adjusted my heart to that attitude, the presence of Christ came. Sometimes it just takes a, 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 a small adjustment on your part. Sometimes it takes a very small part in your heart. And when you shift your perspective to giving Him glory because He's a good God and He deserves your glory, He deserves you to give Him glory. He deserves you to give Him praise because He's worthy and you exist to please him when you adjust your heart in that way immediately the glory of God comes in because he honors those whom he whom honor him he honors those who honor him today this morning I want you to worship him because he's worthy I want you to worship him without trying to get something from him I want you to worship him because he's worthy and I'm telling you when you adjust your heart to seek his face and not try to get something from him even if it's a feeling of his presence and you give him worship and you give him your praise and you give him your affection 
because he's pleased when you do that his presence comes in you know why because you're adjusting to him you're adjusting to his desire amen so let's continue to give him worship
worthy, worthy.
Alleluia. Thessalonians 2.13 And we also thank God continually because when you received the word of God which you heard from us you accepted it not as a human word but as it actually is the word of God which is indeed at work in you who believe Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Ephesians 6.17 Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitude of the heart. Isaiah 34, 16. Look in the scroll of the Lord and read. None of these will be missing. Not one will lack her mate. For it is the mouth that has given the order, and the Spirit will gather them together. Isaiah 55, 11. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty but it will accomplish in what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Job 23, 12. I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. not departed from the commands of his lips I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God John 1 1 John 6 63 the spirit gives life the flesh counts for nothing the words I have spoken to you they are full of the Spirit and life. John 17, 17. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Luke eleven twenty eight. 28. Jesus replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. Luke 24, 45. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. Matthew 4, 4. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
Psalms 12, 6. And the words of the Lord are flawless, like silver purified in a crucible, like gold refined seven times. Revelation 1, 2 who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 17, Consequently, faith comes from hearing and hearing by the Word of God. James 1, 21 through 23. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly receive the word planted in you which can save your soul. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who who looks in a mirror and forgets what kind of man he was. Second Timothy chapter 3 verses 15 through 17 and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The entrance of your word, O Lord, brings light. Ephesians chapter 1, I believe verse 16 or maybe 18, it says, may the eyes of your heart be flooded with light so that you may know the glorious hope of your calling. Scripture says that the Word, the entrance of the Word of God is light. The entrance of your Word, O Lord, is light. Your Word is light, life, and daily bread. We do not live off of bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Your word sustains us. Your word feeds us. Your word strengthens us. Your word is like medicine to my bones. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you will have success. receive the engrafted Word of God that is able to save our souls. Hallelujah. The Word of the Lord endures forever. The grass of the field is here today and gone tomorrow, but your Word endures forever. Heaven and earth may pass away, but your Word is eternal. Lord, you have established your word higher than your name, for your name is your word, and your word is your name. For 
for the Word became flesh. Your Word was tabernacled, became flesh. And those who would receive you, you've given the right to be called the sons of God. Children born not of flesh and blood, children from the will of the Father. Cover the sea filled with glory. Now, I don't want to slip into this too much, but right now I just saw someone at your right foot, the ankle, uh, it's like your foot. I see someone with a cast on your right foot, and I see a, a, a bandage going around it. Now, I don't know fully if this is a physical healing or if the Lord is trying to strengthen your walk through the Word. But I believe it may be a physical healing. And I'm not going to slip into this because once we flow into the flow of the prophetic, it's like it keeps happening over and over. But the Lord wants us to put our attention today on the Word of God. But according to your faith, you that are watching with this cast, I don't know if you had a surgery and there's inflammation. There's like surgery. You just had surgery. And there's some inflammation. We bind infection. And we thank you, Father God, for the swelling to come down. Send your word and bring healing and quick recovery in the name of Jesus. is you, you can just take it for yourself.
Proverbs 35. Every word of God is tested. He is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word. Hebrews 13, 7. Remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and considering the result of their conduct, conduct imitate their faith. Psalm 33, verse 4. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. Revelation 19, 13. He, Jesus, is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Psalm 18, 30. As for God, his way is blameless. The Word of the Lord is tried. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. Hebrews 11.3 By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God. So that is what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Man, that's good. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by what? The word of God. So that is what is seen was not made of things which are visible. The invisible Word of God created the physical world. The invisible created the visible. Second Corinthians 2 17 for we are not like many peddling the word of God but as from sincerity but as from God we speak in Christ in the sight of God Matthew 22 29 but Jesus answered and said to them you are mistaken not understanding the scriptures nor the power of God sent speaks the words of God for he gives the spirit without measure mark 7 13 thus invalidating the word of God by your tradition which you have handed down you do many things such as that By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their hosts. John 12, 48, he who rejects me does not receive my sayings. As one who judges him, the word I spoke is that will judge him at the last day. Hmm. For you have been born again, not of seed, which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring word. 1 Peter 1.23 Jeremiah 23.29 is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer which shatters a rock. I'm going to say that again. Jeremiah 23, 29. Is not my word like a fire, declares the Lord, and a hammer which shatters a rock. 
Your word is like a fire. such an anointing today to talk about the word to minister on the word interesting but as I was just sitting here I saw like a rake you know those like uh, when those rakes that you throw outside they're like metal big old metal ones and I saw the Lord scraping removing the dirt 
removing the dead things, pulling things out, and revealing a door. Revealing a door. And what I believe it means is the Lord is removing the dead things, scraping them through His Word to reveal the Word in your heart. Every time I see a door, I think of Jesus because He says, I am the door. Some of you have allowed life to hit you. Some of you have allowed things in your past, things in the present, just to compile on your heart, layer upon your heart. But if you sit with the Lord and you allow His words to penetrate into you, He will remove he will remove the, the dirt heap. He will remove those dead leaves. And He will reveal the door to you, which is Christ. This specifically also is related to someone here because you've just... And, and I don't want to know who it is in the comments. You don't have this between you and the Holy Spirit. But you recently fell. You fell in a transgression. And it's a very serious thing. But the Lord removes that fallen state and restores you as you worship Him and come before Him in a spirit of humility, He will remove the dead things. He will reveal that He Himself is the door, the door of your heart. Behold, I stand at the door, and if any man, and I knock, and if any man opens the door to me, I will eat with him and he with me. Jesus. word is like a fire. He will clean the threshing floor with an unquenchable fire. His word is like a hammer.
Jesus. your people I pray with fire and passion and love
baptism of the Holy Spirit and of fire. Receive. Don't overthink it. Just worship Him. Don't think your way out of this. Just worship Him. Put your attention on Him. There is a fresh fire falling on some of you.
fire of God is all over you. And let mm -hmm. your glory yes. yes, it is grace. Purity. Hallelujah. Yes. You've asked for it. You've asked for it. Your glory Yes. The Spirit of the Lord is touching many of you. Many of you are receiving a fresh touch from the Father. Jackie Malloy, this is what I sense in my spirit for you. Though I don't know you on the natural, the spirit knows you. And I, I see that you're in a season where you've been asking for more of the Lord. And I see like a transitional season that you're entering into. And the Lord doesn't see the way man sees on the outside. He sees the inward and I just see the Lord lifting you to himself in a greater measure where he will begin to unveil the word to you in such a way as you're reading it. It's almost as if one verse comes and as you read the verse, it becomes a window a fl and the floodgates of revelation begin to take you. I declare a season of revelation of the word of God over you, Jackie Malloy. Is that other person? Where is that other person? Amen. Do you receive the word? Does it bear witness with your spirit? If it bears witness with your spirit, receive it. If it does not bear with your spirit, judge it. Where is that person? person that I saw. Ah, oh, yes. As soon as I saw this name, uh, forgive me if I don't know how to pronounce this. I don't know where you're from. Teshilizi Malange. Um, I saw the fire of God coming upon you in great measure. And there have been, there's, I just see hunger, 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 hunger for the things of God. And you've been hungering for a deeper, deeper walk with the Lord. And the only thing that I can describe it to you is like, it's like a mantle of fire. Like a mantle of fire. Amen. Yeah. Now, I'm going to get to the book in just a moment, but I'm just trying to be, I'm trying to be as sensitive as possible. Uh, there's another wave of fire coming and I got to be obedient to that. See, this dream is, is his dream. Now we're going to get to what I can't wait to share because it's powerful guys. It's powerful. I'm still in a, in a, in a state of un shock to be honest with you, but let's yield a little bit more because the, there's another wave of fire coming. And the fire of God is still wanting to minister to some of you. 
Amen. So there's another, there's another wave coming. There's another wave. There's a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit that is coming to some of you who have yielded and to those who are humble enough to receive it. Just be humble to receive. The kingdom of God requires humility to receive. Hallelujah. Just receive. There's another wave of God's presence and glory. There's another fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, after we're done worshiping here, I know that I know that there are going to be some people who have spoken in other tongues for the first time. Just receive that. How do we receive? By worshiping and believing. I'm reminded of the scripture where it says in Galatians, how did, how did you receive the Spirit? Was it through the works of the law? Or was it through faith? It's faith. And when faith is in the air, you can receive. Faith. Faith is what siphons the power of God into your own belly. I'm telling you, I know in my heart, the Spirit is going to do. Yeah, I have a whole teaching on this, Yashadel. I can't really get into it, but there's more to it than what you think. I'll give you a, I'll give you some scriptures later. But for now. Yeah, there's an anointing. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Wow. Yes.
tongues. Praise God. More are coming.
la luz by the hand.
and a little more we're going to get right to the book just trying to be sensitive right now right now with his glory I see the Lord waking some of you up to get into deeper greater glory in prayer as a family some of you the Lord has already spoken to you about this this is a, just a word of confirmation that you're hearing from heaven see houses of fire press in yield 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 to the spirit give him your heart Yours. 
Relationships, restoration of forgiveness, the pulling up of bitterness, the drinking up of righteousness, the oil of joy for gladness. Forgive that person that offended you. God. Praise the Lord. Now, before we go and continue, I cannot wait to share with you the things that the Lord has done. I'm so amazed at the wonderful things that the Spirit of God is doing. But this is what I got to do. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. Literally two seconds. Well, not two seconds. Maybe 30 seconds. So this is what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to use a restroom real quick. And in the meantime, literally, this is not even going to be... It's going to be literally one minute. In the meantime, what I want you to do is comment on the stream and tell someone on the stream what the Lord just did for you on this stream just now. I want to see the testimonies. I know for a fact some of you spoke with other tongues. I know for a fact 
some of you received a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. And if David Cruz can help me sort those testimonies out so that we can say them while I use the restroom and maybe Jenny Cruz, which by the way, subscribe to her channel. My goal is to make her have a thousand subscribers. But listen, I'm gonna use the restroom real quick. What I want you to do is comment, go ahead and share your testimony. And then I, I, I'm gonna share what the, what the Lord has done. This stream is a special stream today, amen? Yeah, one moment, one moment. 30 seconds. God. Praise God. Praise God. Okay. Now, um, if you can put a, maybe I should have just said put a T in front of your testimony so I can see, but I'm going to start reading and then we're going to get into what I want to talk about. Yeah. Kathy says, fresh infilling of his fire and his glory is filling my house, such a sweet anointing of his presence. Amen. Ray says, as I held my hands to receive, I felt like something was in front of them, like something was occupying the space. Uh, Bethany says, the joy was overwhelming. I li it literally made me tremble all over. Praise God. Yeah, you could feel the tangible presence of God. is healing my wounds from life and from others praise god heaviness in the belly praise god out of your belly will flow rivers of living water yeah laura says i'm sharing my testimony i felt the fire someone touched my hands i received new tongues hallelujah in the, in the spirit of joy hallelujah I was laughing and talking in new tongues amen <laughs> that's awesome Praise God. Hallelujah. Salome is burning. Hallelujah. Soaking in the power of God. I'm at work and I felt the fire of God on my back and neck in the hands and a deliverance has happened. I believe that I receive a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Yeah. You, you sung in tongues and you saw a sword. That's funny because... That's funny because... I saw that too. Yeah, a lot. See, I knew this was going to happen. A lot of new tongues. Yeah, praise God. Receive more. Yeah, Bethany says her back and her neck was healed. Betty says she sent renewed in peace. I'm standing on the fire of God as he broke in the chains of addiction off my husband. Praise God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uncontrollable weeping. Rebecca's weeping as well. I know I was delivered from some things. I saw Jesus, um, extremely tall man in white with fire in his eyes. I felt all kinds of craziness in the presence. Amen. Yes. Holy Spirit was all over me, powerful. Wow. Trembling all over the smoke. Wow. A deep healing. Yes, praise God. Yep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I feel new. Some of you sense peace. Marcus says, spoken tongues for the first time and a powerful wave going through my body from the top of my head. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Aesthetic expert says, I received my prayer language today. Praise God. I knew the Holy Ghost was going to fill some people today with tongues for the first time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Elsa says she spoke in tongues. Amen. New tongues, Sarah says. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yep. Marco says, I received a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. The previous night I broke down in tears because I was so disappointed in myself not be able to stop sinning. But just now, I am filled. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Still in tongues. New tongues. Praise God. Wow, that's awesome. Ronte says he was weeping and wor he was worshiping and he felt like water. Hallelujah. Mm. Yeah, Xavier says that, that he sensed the literal flame over his head. Hallelujah. He says that many are feeling the same. Wow. Yeah. D says new tongues. I spoke with new tongues. Hallelujah. Come on. I knew that the Spirit of God would fill people anew. Wow. Yep. Selena says, I felt the fire of God on my neck and my back and spoke with new tongues. Come on. Believers shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Come on, brothers and sisters. New tongue. A lot of you are saying new tongues. Come on. If you have received tongues, new tongues, I want you to just put in the comment description, um, put it on the, on, on the chat here, new tongues. Just put that so that I can put it on the screen and so that people can be refreshed by your testimony. Amen? So just put that on the screen, on the, on the chat. Um, praise God. Just put new tongues so that we can go quickly. And then we'll get into what I want to share. But I knew the Lord was showing me. I was sensing that the fire of God was going to come. And the fire of God was going to release a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'll just wait a little bit. A little bit and then um, we're going to get right into it. But if you can, put on the chat new tongues. Amen. Emily received new tongues. Praise God. Guys, listen, I want you to rejoice for these brothers and sisters. D says new tongues. God's woman of warrior says new tongues. Selena says new tongues. Jujube rice, new tongues. Hallelujah. Healed of pain, Marie Screlo says, and infilling of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Bree says new tongues. Hallelujah. Then just receive Rebecca in Jesus' name. Marcus says new tongues. Wow. New tongues. Praise God. Look at this. Ellie. So many of you guys. Nettie. Hallelujah. Man, there's there's at least man, there's at least like five or six or seven of you that the Spirit ministered to you in that way. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. All right, guys. Let's shift. Let's shift over. Yeah, Mrs. Demigol from Turkey. I was weeping uncontrollably, and when Chris said healing hands, my hands felt like small electric shocks singing in my hands. Wow. Yeah, bearing witness says, I am on fire. Praise God. I have been bound for a while, 
and I knew something demonic was going on, but now I'm free. Thank you, Father. Come on, rejoice. Rejoice, woman of God. Hallelujah. Mm. Yeah, powerful daughter says, share with, with the sick today. Healing virtue is here too. Hallelujah. I'm saying in new tongues. Praise God. Listen, some, if you have questions about tongues and interpretations, this is, um, today's not going to, I'm not really going to get into that today, but I have a whole teaching called everything you need to know about speaking with other tongues and it's on the YouTube channel. Amen. All right. Praise God. If you received the healing, go ahead and put it as a testimony and then we're going to get right into it. Come on. We're going to get right into it. Wow. If Jennifer Cruz can count how many received new tongues, or if David Cruz can count, tell me how many, because that's a testimony, man. That's awesome. Hallelujah. Yeah. Needy says that when you said body and soul and spirit, I felt healing of it in my body and spirit thank you jesus hallelujah glory to god hallelujah yeah god is sovereignly delivering god is sovereignly healing isn't these testimonies wonderful hallelujah so if you guys can either jennifer cruz or david cruz if you guys can let me know how many received new tongues. Kelly says it's like a dozen or so. But this is awesome. Amen. Don't you, don't you know that we serve an, a living God? <laughs> we serve a living Christ. I woke up this morning and I kept hearing the phrase fire of God. Fire of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, more than 10 so far, Jennifer says. Praise God, more than 10 people received new tongues. Yeah. Betty says, what is it? I feel fire in my mouth. That's the Lord. Just yield to it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, guys, listen. I can't hold on any longer. I cannot hold on any longer. I cannot wait to share this with you. So, let's get right into it, amen? Let me see if this works. Just give me a second here. Let me see if that works. Okay. All right. Now, before I get into this testimony, I want to bring something. The only way for you to understand the testimony is to, is to see this article, okay? And today, as you can see, the stream is called The Heavenly Book, and basically it's a 200-year-old Bible. And this is a man here, and his name, he goes by 5-0. Hawaii 5-0. <laughs> he goes by 5-0. But he's a Native American man. And his name is Jimmy Muskrat. Okay? Now, there's a reason why I'm bringing this up so that you can see. Because this is, this is really awesome. I'm still at, at a state of shock. But the art, I'm going to read this article with you. And then I'm going to share what, what, what this means. Okay? Uh, to us here. But it says here, um, a 200-year-old Bible brings blessings even to non-believers. Now listen to this testimony. Jimmy Muskrat, reading the 1822 Bible that was gifted to him from an Oregon minister, Aaron Auer, while visiting Oklahoma, Rene Fight. A 200-year-old Bible is bringing a new, profound, and humble purpose. Jimmy Musk Muskrat, known to friends as 5-0, has been serving as an evangelist 
to tribes locally across the United States, Native American tribes, sharing the love of God through house to house ministry. That's the name of his ministry, house to house. He was invited to meet a preacher from Oregon who was speaking in little Kansas, Oklahoma. Muskrat went and immediately liked Aaron Orr. I got to hear what he said about the 200 year old Bible, the amazing stories of the book of heaven and the circuit writing preacher, Jason Lee said Muskrat. Lee, Jason Lee was the first missionary in the Pacific Northwest. He began to meet tribal leaders and held a camp meeting that brought several tribes together. A recount by Yakima chief White Swan in 1905 told how at first chiefs did not want to hear, but his words had melted their hearts. The next time Orr was coming to the area, he requested Muskrat meet with him. He had the Bible and the people were in awe, wanting to touch it or hold it. He said, God has laid it on his heart. Let me see if I can just find it here. Um, let me see here. Just give me one second. Let me see if I can try to minimize it just a tad. Okay. Where did I leave off here? Yeah, he said, God has laid it on his heart to present it to me because I see more tribes than he does. I was shocked. So essentially, this 200-year-old Bible that was from the old circuit writing days about 200 years ago from Jason Lee, who preached the gospel to the Indians, the Native Americans, And um, Jimmy Muskrat received this Bible. And, and listen, I'm just going to keep reading because this is so powerful. So he said the next time Orr was coming to the area, he requested Muskrat meet with him. And he had the Bible and the people were in awe wanting to touch it and hold it. And he said, God has laid it on his heart to me to present it to me because I see more tribes than he does. I was shocked, said Muskrat. Although the Bible was found in a bookstore in Oregon by Orr, it has provenance that it may link to Lee. It is a Reverend John Brown splendid Bible with a beautiful black and white pictures inside. It must weigh over 10 pounds. Muskrat plans to have the Bible authenticated but for him, it's about taking the Bible to meet tribes, the Native American tribes, and bring them together and sharing Aaron Lee's testimony. Uh, Aaron Lee's story speaks to, another, to other tribes of great value of unity. Now listen carefully, guys. Everybody's like, wow, someone from Bell is doing this? I didn't think I would be doing anything like this. It's a great responsibility God put in my hands. I get to preach from it, he said. Last month, he spoke to men from all over, as far as Africa and Israel. Me, from Bell, Oklahoma, I saw nations coming to their knees, he said. This week, Muskrat is headed to Wisconsin, Minnesota, to speak at revivals with many tribes. Man, I feel the Lord. <laughs> in, Jason's, in Jason Lee's time, the tribes honored the Creator without the written word until he arrived with the Book of Heaven. I feel we'll do the same thing he did, bring tribes together, said Muskrat. He spent 10 years, Muskrat spent 10 years in Los Angeles praying and walking in gang areas and revival broke out evangelizing you have to go in and read the grounds to discern i'll sit and pray and talk with them ahead of time to break ground muskrat said i seed then i go back i reach out to elders who tell others that i'm here to bring the word he said i want to share what will change this nation has to start at home. There is so there is such need in so many tribes, alcohol, drugs, and suicide. Some places, an average of 13 suicides a month. He's not afraid to pray in dark places. 
His first mission trip was 19 years ago to Mexico where he spoke to cartels, but he'd had many encounters that weren't easy. Listen what Muskrat says. He says, at one meeting, I was told by the medicine man that he was going to kill me. After I spoke, he came and talked with me. He said he came to kill me yesterday, but when he came into the building, his heart melted and now he wanted to have coffee with me, said Muskrat. Another one told me he loves that he read. Another one he told me he reads Jesus love and I want to be here. He says, medicine men and chiefs have refused to participate. Then the next day we sit beside him. At one funeral after he prayed, an eagle flew overhead in a circle three times. Then the people who did not want him there asked him to pray over their house. I've told them your warriors are in the grave. If you look, their bones are there. But my Jesus, my warrior is alive and his bones are not there, he said. At one point he prayed for a cross and it came to him, a 40 pound cross he takes wherever he's called. I want people to know that there's hope in the Lord. Many think that there's no hope, but Jesus is using this boy from Bell, Muskrat said. Some people are like dams, he said. We have too many Christians acting like beavers. They stop the flow of Jesus' love, he said. But faith is moving him forward. I'm obeying and I'm going by faith. Hallelujah. To invite Muskrat to speak or donate to his ministry, call 918-410-6999 or email jimmymuskrat3 at gmail.com. I'm going to put his email down. Jimmy Muskrat. Let me see how you spell it. Mus. Isn't that a powerful testimony? Listen to this. This man is from Oklahoma. He literally lives like three hours away from me. Now, why am I saying this? Look at this Bible. This brother, this brother here is a, is, is a Native American man from one of the Cherokee tribes. There's a specific name. I, 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 can't, I keep forgetting the name of the tribe. I think it's Tikua. Let me see if I have it here. Let me see. Kitowa, Cherokee. Powerful testimony, right? Now check this out. This man felt led of the Holy Spirit to come to Fort Smith, Arkansas, where, where this is where we live around this area. It's about a three hour drive. And he went to the bookstore and it just so happens that the owner of the bookstore, he might even be watching right now. His name is Larry Lum. He's one of the elders at our church over at Victory Church. And they connected. And as soon as Jimmy prayed for Larry, he, he, Larry immediately felt led of the Lord to connect myself and, and Pastor Gary and the church. And literally the next day, I, I'm, I'm in this, uh, this was yesterday. I'm knocking. I hear a knocking. And I'm like, oh, who's that? And I open the door and it's this gentleman right here. And he has this Bible in his, in his truck. And he said, hey, Jimmy Muskrat. And I said, are you 5-0? And he said, yes. <laughs> and we started talking. <clears throat> and um, man, as soon as that man walked in, I felt the glory of God. I felt that that man carried the presence of God. And he began to talk to me. And he began to speak to me about revival and the things that he has seen. And the souls who have come to Christ 
through the ministry of this Bible. And so we start talking and he starts sharing a couple of things with me. And I want to share this with you. Listen, listen carefully. I have these papers and I want to read this to them. You know, the Bible says that God has written eternity into the hearts of men. Those who do not know the gospel, who have never heard of the gospel, who have never heard of the preaching of the word. The Lord has set upon them eternity written on their hearts so that they would believe. And this man, this he gave me all these papers and I need to read these things to you before I get into everything and, and why we're talking about this. But this, I don't know if you could see this picture here. This is an old Indian chief who was a part of this uh, word that was given in one of his tribes during the old days of the circuit riding. And this is what Chief Spokane uh, Gary said. He recalled the last half of the old circling raven's prophecy. There was a prophecy that was given um, through the lips of a Native American uh, elder. And listen, look at what it says here. It says, after the white men with the leaves of life, the book of heaven come, other white men will come who will make slaves of us. Then our world will end. We will simply be overrun by the white men as though by grasshoppers. When this happens, we should not fight as it would only create unnecessary bloodshed. Isn't that wild? So this Indian chief man, this Native American man, gets a prophecy before, every, before anything happens and he says, after the white men will come with the leaves of life, the book of heaven. What is the leaves of life? The pages, the leaves of the Bible. You see, don't tell me that God can't speak to, to the Gentile nations. See, he was, he was preparing people. And then he says, after these men would come with the book of heaven, other white men would come and they will make slaves of us. And then our world would end. And listen, historically speaking, that happened. The first people that came into the Americas were the missionaries who brought the word of God. Isn't that wild? The leaves of white. The, the, I'm not sorry, not the leaves of white. The leaves of, of life. The leaves of life. Doesn't Jesus say, my word to you? My word is spirit and it is life. This is powerful, guys. Don't tell me that the Lord doesn't know how to prepare those who would receive the gospel. Don't you see that the Lord is, works before we even come to the scene? The Holy Spirit begins to work. And this man received that prophecy. And, and historically speaking, many of the Native Americans received because of this prophetic word. And then shortly after that, then there was the trail of tears and all the bloodshed that happened. See, what happened was the word of God was sown. But then Satan came to, to bring destruction. And so there's a great healing that needs to take place with, the, with, with Native American nations. Now listen, I'm about to explode because you have no idea why I'm sharing this. And you're going to be amazed just as much as I'm away, amazed. Here's another one. This is Chief White Swan, Yakima Chief. And he recalls the, the revival that occurred with the man Jason Lee, the man who is, who, who, whose Bible is that right there, that 200-year-old Bible. Listen, listen to this testimony by Chief Yakima. I'm sorry, yeah, White Swan Yakima Chief. Listen. Listen carefully. White Swan, Chief of the Yakimas, in an address before the Methodist Congress held in Portland during the Lewis and Clark expedition in 1905, he said, if you ask me a question, have you seen Jason Lee, the first missionary? I answered, yes, I saw him. Some ask, how old are you, White Swan? And I answer, I am 86. I was old enough to understand everything. And this missionary, he baptized me at that time. And that time, I joined the church camp meeting at Waskapam, the Dallas. 
when he started to work he sent 10 indians from place to place to ask other indians to come to camp meeting and all different tribes came together then he buy dry salmon and other things in that camp meeting he put them one tent 40 or more that was the first time we saw why we saw wheel cart he sent two men to haul wood for the indians came all around different tribes and they make seats to have the different tribes together listen carefully in the middle he make a place for himself to preach and read the bible on a little table he spoke through three interpreters for each tribe at that time while he was preaching it seems to me that the missionary spoke it seems to me that um, the missionary spoke strong words when he opened the Bible to speak to the Indians while Lee was preaching the Indian chiefs sat smoking not caring to hear the gospel three or four days while he was preaching all women and chiefs felt different just like something had melted and hot had come down my god jesus and they threw away their tomahawks and caps wore bonnets and fall down to ask god to forgive them my jesus whoa my god people were surprised to see what kind of spirit came down and then they look at each other all to see the tears run down each other's faces then all fall down and worship god they used to feel all right but found now they were not right inside they would look at one another after a while they would join the church and raise up as one nation at that time jason lee learned from the first indian language after a few months he never used to have an interpreter now he just preached himself after the camp meeting was closed he showed them how christ used to do and sent them two by two among the rocks to pray and the indians used to pray just like birds singing among the trees that was the way of this first missionary worked for the indians white swan is true witness i saw and heard him for myself truly this missionary brought light to the dark place for the indian he stops the fight fire he stops the fire fight after all the indian tribes never fall together against the white people they were friendly after that but then the indians who had not heard the gospel were unfriendly my god are you listening to this my jesus here's another testimony from he ok se kin farewell speech listen this is from pastor aaron er who who wrote this listen carefully we came to you over the trail of many moons man guys listen this is so powerful what i'm going to share with you i pray that as i read this the holy spirit break you i pray that as i read this the holy spirit convict you I pray that as I read this, the Holy Spirit would cause you to tremble to preach the gospel. Listen carefully. Listen. Look at what happened here. We came to you over a trail of many moons from the setting of the sun. You were a friend of our fathers who have all gone the long way. We came with our eyes partly open for more light for our people who sit in darkness we go back with our eyes closed how can we go back blind to our blind people we made our way to you with strong arms through many enemies and strange lands that we might carry back much to him we go back with empty and broken arms the two fathers who came with us the braves of many winters and wars we leave here asleep by your great wigwam they were tired in their journey of many moons and their moccasins were worn out our people sent us to get the white man's book of heaven you took us where they worship the great spirit with candles but the book was not there you showed us the images of good spirits and pictures of good land beyond but the book was not among them to tell us the way 
You made our feet heavy with burdens of gifts, and our moccasins will grow old and carrying with them, but the book is not among them. We are going back the long, sad trail of our people. When we tell them after one more snow in the big council that we did not bring the book, no word will be spoken by our old men, nor by our young braves. One by one, they will rise up and go out in silence. Our people will die in darkness and they will go on the long path to the other hunting grounds. No white man will go with them. No book of heaven to be to make the way plain. We have no more words. Here are Indian tribes, Native American tribes coming together and they give them, the white man gave them all these wonderful things but they were hungry for the book they were hungry for the word they saw beautiful cathedrals they saw beautiful things but they did not see the book may our hearts burn with the word of god and may we reach the loss with the power of the word his word is a light to our path his word so anyway this man comes to me and we start talking about the gospel we start to, he starts telling me all of the powerful things of all of the wonderful things that god was doing and he said you want to see the bible you want to see jason lee's bible the 200 year old bible i said yes i i would love to and he 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 grabs the bible and he opens it and man, I felt the glory of God. I can feel history. I could feel revival history there. And um, he was like, he was showing me the books and he was showing me the big Bible and, and all these wonderful things. And immediately he started talking about breaking ground. The Lord, he said, the Lord has sent me to be a groundbreaker that's what that's what uh, jimmy was saying jimmy muskrat was saying the lord has sent me to be a groundbreaker and i said what do you mean he said he said um you need to read hosea let me see if i can find it i think it's hosea uh is it 412 i believe um no that's not it or is it 612? Let's see. No, it's not that. He basically talks about so, Hosea. Just give me one second. Yeah. Okay, listen to this verse. Listen to this. Sow for yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he rains righteousness upon you. That's Hosea 10, 12. And he says, that's what breaking ground means. And um, he kept talking about breaking ground, groundbreaking, breaking ground. And he said, the Lord led me to Fort Smith here. And I said, okay. And the entire time, I kept thinking about the vision that I had two years ago when I came here to Fort Smith for the first time. And I almost didn't share it with him because I didn't know if it was going to offend him. Or, you know, I didn't know what it, but, but let me tell you the vision that I had. And um, check this out. Two years ago when I moved to Fort Smith, I had a vision. My wife and I had a vision, the same vision. And I saw... Uh, Fort Smith and I saw this big giant Indian chief and he's towered strong like this like a strong man and the spirit of the Lord showed me that it was a principality over the region of Fort Smith and then I saw a dome like heavy glass cover the city of Fort Smith with with oppressions and I saw the light of heaven trying to pierce through the dome like glass and it could not pierce through because of the principality that was in the city. 
And I remember trying to rebuke that spirit and the Holy Spirit said to me, do not rebuke it. Look to me. Do not pay attention to what you see. Look to me and worship me. And as I began to worship the Spirit of the Lord, as I began to worship the majesty and the glory of Christ, that tall 25-foot principality that was standing next to a riverbank seemed to grow small. And as I was worshiping the glory of Christ and worshiping the greatness of His name, I saw by vision the ground breaking with communion. I saw wine breaking through the ground of Fort Smith. I saw communion, the bread of heaven, falling and being sown into the ground of Fort Smith. And then in front of me, that dome opened up and I saw the light of revival filling Fort Smith. My God in heaven, I can recall it like it was yesterday. And the next morning I woke up and I heard a man audibly speak to my right ear saying to me, Dominion, 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 Dominion. And I woke up and I heard those words. And if you don't believe me, go and look up the, the look up Dominion in my YouTube channel. I preached on Dominion the first time I got to Fort Smith two years ago. And when I saw this, I immediately knew that it had the breaking of ground. The Lord was showing me that there was these spirits, these principalities. And I saw for some reason this Native American chief thing. And the Lord told me not to worry about it, just to worship the Lord. And as we were worshiping and making it about the presence of God, the ground began to break and wine and bread began to be sown. And it, it, it was like relationship was restored on the ground. And when I saw that, when I saw that, I saw revival falling. Well, when I said that, I woke up and um, I, I went to... Um, uh, after I heard the voice, I woke up and I went that Sunday morning to preach on dominion. Now the Holy Spirit did not tell, did not <clears throat> lead me to share all of the story. Okay? He only told me to share about the oppression and the canopy of the heaviness that was there and how um, worshiping him was going to pierce through. And I said that. And when I said that, an older man, about 82 years old, 81, he looks at me and he's intently nodding his head. And to the point where it kind of surprised me. And he said to me, um, after the service was over, I, I said, does that witness to you guys? And all the older folks were nodding their heads. And at the end of the service, this older man, Odell Curtis, which I will bring him here on the stream. He's, he's a, like a, his great grandfather was a revivalist in California. He was filled with the Holy Ghost and power during the times of the Azusa Street Revival. He comes and he puts his hand over my chest and my wife. He had no idea that we were moving to Fort Smith. And he said, brother, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said that you would take some part. There would be a part to play in ushering in the breaking of the ceiling for Fort Smith. You and your wife will have a part to play in it. And I was like, whoa, he doesn't even know that I'm considering to move to Fort Smith. I was just visiting. And um, he said, God spoke to my heart and he said this to me. And I was like, whoa, okay, the ceiling's about to break, brother. That's what he said. Well, I didn't know what this meant at all for a long time. And when I moved here, I did not know about the historic site of Fort Smith. When I went to Fort Smith, I went to downtown Fort Smith and I saw the hanging judge gallows and right behind that beautiful park, lo and behold, the trail of tears, the beginning of the trail of tears. And immediately I thought of the vision and guess where that was near a river, just as I saw. And I said, my Lord, what is this? What is this? And the Lord started showing me that, that there, was, there was sin done. There was things done to the peoples of the Native American tribes. And that the only solution was the presence of God and communion with Christ. And I started sharing with some of my pastor friends in the area what I saw. 
Now, all of a sudden, fast forward two years into it, and this man is talking about breaking ground, breaking ground, breaking ground, breaking ground. He said, the Lord sent me here to Fort Smith. He's like, I don't know why, but he's like, he said, breaking ground. This is uh, Jimmy Muskrat said this. He said, breaking ground. So finally, I just said, I got to tell you this. I don't even know if you believe in visions. I don't know. But then, man, as soon as he started talking, he was prophesying. And he was talking about the visions that he had. And listen carefully. I shared the vision with him. And I said, I was really reluctant because I'm like, well, I don't know if, you know, I don't want him to, to, to think like I'm, I'm, I'm demonizing chiefs or something. You know, that wasn't my intention. But I felt like I was supposed to share this. So I shared everything with me. And he looks dead in my face and he says, I know what it means. I know what it means. And I said, what does it mean? He said, the strong man will be bound. The religious tradition and the spirit of religion will be overtaken by the river of revival. He said, the river of glory, the river in the belly, the river of the Holy Ghost and power is what Fort Smith needs. He said, brother, he said, brother, rivers of living water is the solution to Fort Smith. Rivers of living water is the solution. He said, you saw that chief? He said, you, it, was, it was bound by the presence of the Lord. And he said, you saw that river, that rivers to show you that the floodgates are about to open with Fort Smith. And how crazy is that? That a Native American man two years after the vision i mean that's insane like i was so dumbfounded he said i need I, in my mind i said will this man pray for me he literally read my thought he said i will pray for you now and brothers and sisters let me tell you he started praying about the river of glory he started talking about the river of god the river of healing the river of deliverance the river of the baptism of the spirit the river of the holy ghost and I was like, dear Lord in heaven, I feel the glory of God. It was like electricity seeping through my bones. Now, hold on a second. My camera had died. Give me one second, guys. Now, listen. He's like, Gary comes in, my, my, our pastor, and he's like, when can you come preach for us? And um, he was like, well, the only time I have is this Sunday. Well, I was supposed to preach this Sunday. I said, I will step to the side and you will preach this Sunday for me. So this Sunday, he's going to come preach. And I'm expecting God to break ground. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what's going to happen. But after this had occurred, he said, would you like to hold the Bible? I said, yes, sir, I would. He said, the Lord told me to tell you to hold this Bible keep it in your house keep it in your home until sunday he said read from it gleam from it he said i don't ever do this with any man he said i've never done this before he said but god just spoke to me to give you my bible and you will return it to me sunday this is the very bible that is 200 years old guys he said everyone that would look upon it he said, anyone that would read it, he said, everyone that would look upon it, their hearts would grow soft. He said that he would bring this Bible and he would put it to the altar. He said, Men medicine men would come to Christ. They would come weeping on their knees. They would just look at it with one glimpse of this word, with one glimpse of the scripture. And it's almost as if he is, God is fulfilling those prophetic words that were spoken years and years ago that said we were in the church but there was no word and God is fulfilling this he is giving the word back to the Native American peoples he is giving the word of God back to those who have been bound in darkness who sit in darkness the entrance of the word gives light those who have sat in darkness a light has come I am so honored to hold this I don't even know why I'm holding this. I have no, I'm still shocked. 
last night I opened this and I was reading from it and I just felt the glory of God as I was reading and I want to read something from you for you just give me a minute here because <laughs> it's huge hallelujah yes I want to read Hosea 10 12 from this Bible just give me a minute because it's huge and then I'm going to show you how it looks but brothers and sisters I can feel revival history in the pages of these scriptures I can see he he said to me he said brother you're blessed to hold this Bible he said do you know how many tribes this has touched do you know how many tribes how many hundreds have come to Jesus through this book I I said my God so just give me a minute just give me a moment let me look for it I believe as I read it there will be an impartation to you from the word give me one moment so big guys thank you Lord man I, I'm just telling you I just sense the power of the spirit It's all in Roman numerals, so just give me a minute. Let me look for it. Listen, I'm going to read Hosea chapter 10. I'm going to read the whole chapter. Let's see if I can bring this up here so you can see with me. Israel is an empty vine. Let me see if it's the right one. Hold on. Yes, Israel is an empty vine. He bringeth forth fruit unto himself, according to the multitude of his fruit, hath he increased the altars. According to the goodness of his land, they made the godly images, goodly images. Their heart is divided. Now, now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. For now they shall say, we have no king because we feared not the Lord. Then we should a king to do to us they have spoken words <clears throat> swearing falsely and making a covenant thus judgment springing up as a hemlock in the furrows in the fields the inhabitants of samaria shall fear because of the calves of beth avon for the people thereof shall mourn over it and the priests thereof that rejoiced in it and glory thereof because it departed from it it shall also be unto Assyria that for a present king Jerob, Ephraim shall receive shame and Israel ashamed at their own counsel. And Samaria, her king is cut off from the foam upon the waters. The high places of Avon, sin of Israel shall be destroyed. The thorn and thistle shall come up to their altars. They shall say to the mountain, cover us and to the hills fall on us. O Israel, thou hast sinned from the days of Gebeah. There they stood the battle in Gebeah against the children of iniquity 
not overtook them. Is it not my desire that I should chastise them? And the people shall be gathered against them when they shall bind themselves to two pharaohs, as Ephraim as in a heifer that is taught, and loveth and treadeth upon the corn. Woe! As Ephraim as in heifer that is taught, and loveth to tread the corn, but I passed over their fair neck, I shall make Ephraim a ride, Judah shall plow, and Jacob shall break its clods. This is the part that I want to get to. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up the fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. You have plowed wickedness, and ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies, because thou didst trustest in thy way and the multitude of thy mighty men. Therefore shalt tumult rise upon thy people, and the fortress shall be spoiled, and Shalaman and Beth Arbel in the days of battle. The mother was dashed in pieces, and her children. So Beth El, look, do unto, uh, because of your great wickedness. In the morning shall the king of Israel be cut off. But this is the verse. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. One more verse I want to read for you. One more verse I want to read for you. The verse is this. Sowing in righteousness. Now he's talking about Israel's sin there. But when, when Israel gets right with God, there will be a great harvest. This is a prophecy. But this applies to us too. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for now is the time to seek the Lord until he comes and rains righteousness upon you. That's the verse I want you to think about. One more verse we'll read, and then we'll pray. This thing is huge, guys. Let me see if I can find this one verse here. XC. Oh, wow, look at that. I literally just turned to it. Okay, let me see if I can read this. XC. Okay, here he goes. Ready? Psalm 92. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Upon an instrument of ten strings, upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound, for thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the work of thy hands. O oh Lord, how great are thy works, and how thy thoughts are very deep. The brutish man knoweth not, neither doth the fool understand this, when the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity flourish. It is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O oh Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn and i shall be anointed with fresh oil mine eye shall also see my desire on mine enemy and mine ear shall hear the desire of the wicked that rise up against me the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree he shall grow like the cedar of lebanon those that be planted in the house of the lord shall flourish in the courts of our god they shall still bring forth fruit in old age, they shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Amen.
man, <laughs> this thing is so huge that it needs a separate table. It's so huge, it needs a separate table. Let me see if I can kind of... This thing is ginormous. Let's see, let's... um. It was another verse, Lord. Okay. I want, I want to read this to you. And then I'm going to show you some really cool things how this Bible looks like. It's, it's so big. I want to read. I want to keep reading here and just receive through the word. Just receive through the word. This is a 200 year old Bible. I'm going to show you some of the really cool uh, designs on it so you can see when it was coined. I'm reading Isaiah chapter 54 and we're going to read two chapters sing O barren thou that didst not bear break forth into singing and cry aloud thou that didst not travail with child for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife saith the Lord enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spear not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left hand. Thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither thou confounded for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shall not remember the approach of thy widowhood anymore. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, thy redeemer. The Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy God. For a small moment I have forsaken thee, but with great mercies I will gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me, for as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go cover the earth, over the earth. So I have sworn that I would not wrath with thee nor rebuke thee. I know it's old English, but this is like 200 years old. For the mountains shall depart in the hills removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall thou neither shall thou covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed by the tempest, and comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires. I will make thy windows of gates, and thy gates of carbuncles, they shall be uh, borders of pleasant stones, and thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children, and righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear from the terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they surely gather thee together, but not by me. Whoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that billoweth the coals of fire, and bringeth forth the instrument for its works, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee 
shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And then there's some reflections here from this old Bible. And it says, Wretched was the state of religion in the world for so many ages before Christianity was established. And great power in God and care for men are necessary for the spreading of the gospel and enlarging the church. But surely it is much to be lamented that some who have the most of the means have the least of power and grace. It is the great matter of joy to the long-rejected Gentiles that Jesus is our most, our uttermost. May we ever walk as a bride, loving, cleaving to, and trusting him. He, conden he, he condenses our wretchedness in dealing with our souls as he wisely mingles his favor and frowns that we may ne neither be proud under the one nor despair under the other. But the unchangeableness of his love and covenant of peace, graciously he remarks his people's distress and balances them with his, with his mercies. His mercies are unnumbered. His instructions effectually render us pious and peaceful. And safe are those amidst millions of enemies who have Jesus' righteousness imputed to their conscience. And Jehovah, as the manager of the world, in him, their protector, the revenger of the injuries done to them. That is powerful. So this has like commentaries, really old commentaries with this. Now listen, I'm going to read one more chapter and then we're going to read this reflection and then I'm going to show you I'm going to show you some really cool um, lithographs on here. Old Bibles have pictures and from the 1800s. All right, Isaiah 55. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which does not satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and ye eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me and hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader of the commanders of the people. Behold, thou shalt call to nation that thou knowest not, and a nation that knew thee not will run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways. My ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and snow from heaven, and return not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word but that go be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come the fir tree, instead of the briar shall come the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. And then finally, I'm going to read this reflection here. Look at this. Reflections. Think now, my soul, how all the blessings of salvation are framed to answer our end. The most trifling cumberers of God's vineyard, nay, the most notorious sinners, are expressly and earnestly invited by Him to receive without any conditions. Infinite is His grace, who at infinite expense provides these favors for his enemies, his betrayers and murderers, thus offers them his despisers. But infinitely criminal must be that belief which treads on such grace and doubts the fulfillment of his infallible promises. And base is the hard and cruel 
is the preacher who gives Jehovah the lie and pretends that self-formed qualifications of sensibility and sincerity must render us welcome to the market of grace. Wow. You guys want to see more of how it looks like? Let me show you some, some, some old, um, lith I think they're called lithographs from the 1800s. Look at this. Look at this. Here's Moses. And he says, unto him you shall listen. That's Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 13. And he points to Christ. And then here you see it says, the self-interpreting Bible, Reverend John Brown, embellished and elegant engravings, Brown Splendid Bible, 1826. Isn't that awesome? So here's Moses and the law. Moses represents the law and the prophets pointing to Christ. And on the, on, the, on the tablet, it says, Unto him you shall listen. And it's the direct fulfillment of Matthew's gospel when Moses and Elijah appear. And then all of a sudden, everyone disappeared. And God spoke and said, Listen to my beloved son. Hear ye him. I mean, guys, look at this. Ugh, this is 10 pounds. Isn't this powerful? I, we, we put it in a suitcase. But can you imagine the thousands of Native American people who have come to Christ simply by looking at this word? Can you imagine the hundreds of believers who have come to Christ? Jimmy was telling me that sometimes the services will get so strong that he would put the the book on the altar and people would all the just he would preach from it and literally dr knees would drop and the Holy Ghost would fall repentance of sin righteousness judgment it's powerful right look at the inside of it it's this old design I mean, it's real old, guys. Here's some of the Bible stories. Here's Joseph thrown in a pit. Yes, Yalad says, is the Apocrypha in there? Yes. Remember that the Apocrypha was part of the Bible at one time, early in the, about 200 years back. That's a separate question for a separate stream, amen? But isn't this powerful? Guys, I'm telling you, the moment I brought this Bible into my house, I felt the power of God. And I felt it so strong to the point that when I fell asleep, I could feel the power going through my bones. It's like an altar. <laughs> you know, it's the word that has power. Can you imagine how many people have come to Jesus? How many Native Americans have fallen to their knees it's powerful. If you guys can, please do me a favor. Help me get 800 likes. Help me get 800 likes so that it throws it to the engagement of the stream. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to pin. Um, if if you want to. Um, oh, th here's something else. Uh, I He, he talked to me. Um, Jimmy called me. Muskrat, 5-0. He calls me yesterday and he starts giving me words. And man, I just felt the glory of the Lord. He said, Chris, I mean, I'm not saying this for no glory. I'm just saying this so, so you can understand the connection that he made. As soon as I opened the door, I felt the power of God. As soon as he opened the door, I felt the, the presence of God. As soon as he started talking and he said, Chris, he said, as soon as I opened the door and I saw you, I saw rivers flowing out of your belly. He said, I read the grounds. I read the grounds and then I speak the word. And I was like, what do you mean? He, he discerns the land. 
He discerns the people and then he begins to break ground. He, he was telling me how he ministers and he was saying how um, sometimes it would take two to five years just to win people to Jesus. And the way he would do it is he would he would break ground by loving them, by loving the, the, the Native Americans, by being with them, spending time with them, loving on them, praying with them, and just being a light to them. He says, that, he says that's what he calls breaking ground. And then, and then he said, from breaking ground from there, then he gives the, then he, uh, uh, you know, preaches the word. You know, and um, man, um, he's he then he gave me some prophetic words and my wife as well. And and then he's I asked him, I said, is it OK with you that if I can show the people the stream? He he kept telling me anybody that will look on it. He said anybody that will look on it, if they don't know Jesus, their hearts would melt. He said anybody that would look at it, just read it. And then I said, would you I told him about the stream and my, the live stream that we do. And he's like. He was like, yeah, do whatever you feel the Lord telling you to do, brother. And then he says, if you want, I can even stream with you. So next week he's coming over my house and he's going to tell you more about this. I mean, not next week. Why did I say next week? Maybe I'm prophesying, but um, not next week, sometime soon. Because next week I'll be in Mexico. What's crazy is his first missionary trip was Mexico and we're leaving to Mexico. And so pray for us. Amen. Now, I don't know. I, what I want you to do is a couple of things. Pray that the Holy Spirit would anoint Brother Jimmy Muskrat to deliver the Word of God to the people of God here at Victory Church. Pray that the Spirit of God would break the, the grounds in Fort Smith and pray that God would do something powerful. Amen? Pray that the Holy Spirit would move powerfully. Pray for souls to be saved. Pray for the Holy Spirit to draw people. Pray for the letting go of tradition and the embracing of Holy Spirit. Amen? Just across this whole city. There's so many things that are getting, getting ready to happen that I can't yet talk yet. But this city is about to explode in evangelism. I can't get into everything, but I will share soon. But first, these things must take place. The tilling of the ground, the breaking of the grounds, and then the evangelism, the casting of the word. I don't know if Gary Brown is watching, but the casting of the word. And we're, I'm going to have Gary come in as well and talk about what the Lord has told him about the city. And then we're going to bring Jimmy Muskrat, and I'm just going to let him loose. I'm going to give him, he's going to just speak and share whatever God speaks lays on his heart and i know for a fact the glory of god is going to touch your life a man walks with the holy spirit anyway brothers and sisters it is that time i have to get going if you have not subscribed yet i encourage you to do so i'm gonna put right on the description here um if you want to donate to Jimmy, you can. He's believing God for a, a new vehicle and, and several things. If you want to donate to him, you can email him. And I'm going to go ahead and um, let me see if I can find it. I'm going to go ahead and pin it. Maybe somebody, one of you guys can pin it for me. Let me see. Here. All right. I'm going to put this link here. And I'm going to pin this. If you want to invite Muskrat to speak or donate to his ministry, you can call 918-410-6999 or email jimmymuskrat3 at gmail.com or you can send me a donation on the ministry here and as long as you say for Jimmy I'll, I'll be sure to send it to him there is no midnight oil tonight 
There's too much going on this week, this weekend. So guys, please pray for us. For Mexico, pray that God would have his way. Pray for deliverance, healings, manifestations of the miracles of the gospel. And if you want to donate to this mighty man of God, Jimmy Muskrat, evangelist, preacher, apostle, prophet to the Native American peoples, you can, you can donate through the pinned comment or you can donate through my ministry. Make sure that you put a note though that says for Jimmy. Okay? All right, brothers and sisters, it is time. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. To donate and partner, you can do so by texting GLORY to 801801 or go to fathersglory.org. Sign up for an e-course and e an e-book that's coming up very soon. And we will see you hopefully Monday. If not, it's because I left to Mexico. Please pray for our church. I just want to see God move. I don't, I don't care about anything. All I want is the Holy Spirit to move. I want genuine revival. I want to see God genuinely move. I want to see souls saved and come to the kingdom. I want to see the gospel being preached with signs and wonders. And I want to see revival turn this place upside down here in Fort Smith. I don't care who does it, who goes. I don't, it's not about people. It's about him. You see? So... Love you guys all and